What's up, YouTube? Jay Dantastic here, and today I'm joined with the one and only Rhyme Style, and we are going to be talking about balancing in anime games, mostly around the uh, Japan release of Burning Blood, uh, just because that's the most relevant anime game that has come out recently, and why the balancing issues are coming back up. But we're going to talk about uh, how we feel about certain aspects of an anime game being unbalanced and certain aspects of an anime game being balanced that need to be wanna, balanced or have to be balanced. Do you want to define balance in what way you mean it? Yes. Uh, I was actually going to make that point because there's there's two different types of balancing that I'm talking about. Because I, in terms of an anime game, and I'm actually a fan of things that are unbalanced. But what I don't mean by that is I don't mean unbalanced in a way that a character can... Uh, stand back and spam ranged attacks. For example, I've seen a lot of uh, stuff on Twitter about Burning Blood where a character could just stand back and never move and just throw projectiles and kill the other player. I'm not talking about a balancing issue like that where you can't really do anything about it. I I'm think the better way about... to describe that is broken. Yeah, like that's that's broken. Like <laughs> Broken that's not... or cheap cheap mechanics. Yeah, like that's just not good. The, the unbalancing that I'm referencing is that, for example, in a Dragon Ball Z game, if you take Hercule and put him up against Beerus, then it shouldn't be impossible, I guess, for Hercule to beat Beerus, but it should be really difficult, and it should take a lot of skill for the player playing as Hercule to be able to beat a character like Beerus. Um, so I'll give my thoughts on it later, but we can start things off with Ram style. How do you feel about balancing in anime games? So, I mean, I, I don't know. It's it's kind of a, a gift and a curse, to be honest, because, like, let's, let's look at Burning Blood, for example. Burning Blood right now has a little bit of backlash online, and it, I've been playing for the last day. I have the Japanese version, I imported it, and I think the game is fine, to be honest. But in terms of what it, what makes a good fighter, a balanced fighter, Burning Blood is not that. And what I mean by that is, for example, Sanji, in the anime, in the manga, in the series of One Piece, he does not hit girls. In One Piece Pirate Warriors, you cannot select Sanji in missions that have girls as bosses. He does not hit girls. Well, in this game, if you fight someone like Hancock, Nami, Someone like that, Sanji does zero damage to them. In that situation, you literally can't play with Sanji at all online because, well, you will lose. I mean, you you win if it's a dude, but like to anybody who wants to main Sanji, you kind of have to keep your eye open to those who don't have uh, girls in their teams, otherwise, or who do have girls on their teams, otherwise you're going to lose, guaranteed to lose. That is unbalanced, but it's also true to the story, so I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing. In my opinion, I think it's kind of cool that they're that, that true to the story, but at the same time, that's unbalanced in terms of that's kind of unplayable. Now, as far as uh, other mechanics, if you watch One Piece, you already know that if you are basically a Delphi user, you kind of got an advantage of other people. I mean, yeah, you can learn hockey and kind of learn how to use hockey to fight a Devil Fruit, like, for example, a Logia user, such as Enel or uh, even Crocodile or Smoker, to attack them. But I feel like all the Logia users in this game are a bit more advantaged just to the fact that they can break out attacks anytime. Whereas if you're attacking me and you're not a Logia user, like a hockey user, like someone maybe like, like Luffy or Zoro or somebody, you kind of get stuck left in those combos until they finish it or if you can like perfect uh, guard against those attacks, which requires quite a bit of time. Essentially, it's a lot easier to play as Logia users. In that situation, a Logia character is a bit unbalanced, but at the same time, it shoots at a series, so is that a bad thing? Now, you want to use Dragon Ball Z as an example, didn't you? Yeah, uh, probably the best one that I can think of is uh, Tenkaichi 3. You want to fill in uh, what we're talking about with that? Yeah, so basically the the way, if you hadn't played uh, Tenkaichi 3, uh, first stop watching this video and go play that game because it's amazing. It's one of my all-time favorites. Uh, a lot of people had issues with it because they considered it to be unbalanced. Um, for example, if you were to pick a lower tier character like uh, Yajirobe, for example, uh, versus a very strong character like uh, Omega Shinron, for example, then Yajirobe would have like two bars of health and Omega Shinron would have, I don't know what it was, it was like five bars no, of yeah, health. No, Yajirobe had more health like than that. that. He had more health than that. Yajirobe, well he had that move that, uh, he, had, yeah, he had the he, Sinju Bean, so he yeah, could Sinju get all of his, uh, all yeah. of his health back. But, but that, that's, that's the kind of unbalancing that I'm talking about, where there's a weaker character from the show who's actually weak uh, in the game. So how did, I don't know, how did you feel about the balancing in uh, Tenkaichi 3? I mean, to be honest, I never looked at balancing in anime games before. Uh, I feel like balancing became a thing more as we got Dragon Balls later, honestly. And, and the, bigger, the bigger anime got, the more mainstream got. I think that's when balancing became a thing. Because the problem with anime games is a lot of people look at anime fighters as competitive fighters. They compare it to Mortal Kombat, they compare it to Killer Instinct, to Street Fighter. And that's the last thing you should do. Because anime games are designed for anime fans. 
Dragon Ball Z is designed for Dragon Ball Z fans. One Piece is designed for One Piece fans. That's why when people from other anime communities that prefer a certain show over another one, when they play other games, they have problems with the games. They think it's unbalanced, stuff like that. Like everybody right now who isn't a big One Piece fan thinks that Burning Blood is extremely unbalanced. But at the same time, it's true to the series, so it's not technically that unbalanced. Um, <laughs> Exactly, and that's that was that's kind of my point because it's there's there's basically two groups of people. There's the people that want it to be uh, this balanced fighter because they're a fan of the show, but they're yeah. also a, a huge fan of video games and fighters in general, and so they want all of their video games to be balanced, which is fine. But at least when it comes to me, if I want a balanced fighting game because I just want to play a fighter, uh -huh. then I'm gonna play Street Fighter, or I'm gonna play Mortal Kombat, or I'm gonna play Killer Instinct, or right. something like that. I'm not gonna stick in. Xenoverse and expect it to be, you know, the super competitive, ultra balanced game. Because at least for me, I when I play a Dragon Ball Z game, and this was what was huge when Tenkaichi 3 came out, I want to feel like You're I'm Goku. Show. Yeah, yeah, like when I'm playing as Goku, I want to feel like Goku. Yeah, and, right. And it, it doesn't feel that way if I'm freaking, you know, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta and I'm fighting a Cyberman, and the Cyberman is just as strong as I am. Then that's not the show. If if we were going to be completely honest, if you completely balance an anime fighter where all of the ca characters are completely balanced out in the, the terms of like what's fair and what's not, then it's basically just a fighter with anime skins on it, and right, that's right. not true to the show. Well, one thing I want to point out is, uh, I mean, that's essentially what Rage of Blast was. Rage of Blast was a pretty balanced game in terms of everybody's essentially kind of the same, the same level. But one thing I'll point out is one thing that I personally am not a big fan of in anime games and this is this is, the, this is the curse. It's a gift when they do it, but it's also a curse in the end because ultimately you gotta look at a fighter as a fighter. Now, in One Piece Burning Blood, and since we're talking about that, that's the most recent game, so that's a big the topic right now. One Piece Burning Blood is a huge advantage to people who uh, who have low gear fruits. If you pick Crocodile, Smoker, Sabo, Ace, and anybody has basically a low gear type fruit, you can literally always get out of attacks. Whereas if you, like, like I said earlier, if you go back to like playing as someone like Luffy or Zoro or even Chopper, anybody, yeah, you can use Haki to basically attack Logia Guard and stop that. But at the same time, if you're getting attacked by a Logia character, you can't break out of that move. You, you're kind of stuck until the combo ends. And if someone gets another combo, it's another combo, it's another combo, it's another combo. And at that point, it doesn't become fun. Now, I'm personally enjoying a lot of uh, One Piece Burning Blood just because I, I'm a Logia user. But honestly, if this game was all about the other way around, if I was just using the hockey users, I would not have as much fun in the game because it is Hashtag, kind of a uh, Mewtwo and Pokin. No, it's different. <laughs> no, because like literally, because like you haven't played the game yet. Let me, let me tell you how this is. Remember, you play Battle Z, right? Yeah. Okay. You remember Battle Z? How you can't snap vanish out of attacks, and once someone gets you in a combo, you just kind of wait until 14 hits happen, and then either you can get someone back or they start another combo. That essentially is what happens in One Piece Burning Blood if you're a hockey user. If you're a Logia user, think of this way. You can snap vanish any time out of the attack and counter attack and all that stuff as long as you have energy to do it. That is unbalanced. Now, I know every character has the ability to do flash guard and flash step. Uh, not flash step. Uh, flash guard and uh, I forgot what the other uh, phrase was. And from my understanding, what that does is, is you can break out of combo as well if you time it right. But again, that kind of requires you to know the game a lot better and kind of understand the mechanics about to know when to press it, which is fine. You know, anybody can learn. But at the same time, it's still unbalanced to a new fighter. To the person who picks up the game for the first time and plays as Luffy, goes online and gets crushed by Logia user, they might be kind of, you know, less willing to play the game again just because they just got destroyed. I mean, a lot of people will sit down and try to learn all the mechanics, but others will just kind of sit down and play it and be like, okay, you know what, this game sucks. It's kind of and broken, I think, it's unfair. I mean, I, to me, and I keep going back to Tenkaichi 3, but I think that's part of why I loved it so much is that you could pick up the game and just start playing. Right, right. But there was such a high learning curve for that game. Like, the difference between when I first started playing the game and I thought I was good to when I had actually put hours and hours into the game and got good, like, that amount of skill level was incredibly different. And don't get me wrong, there were some aspects of that game that were unbalanced. I'm going to reference one that uh, Dino knows all oh too well. God. If you use second form cell, uh, you could get someone in an almost infinite loop. That's where you not can... unbalanced. That's just, that's just broken. It's, but see, but that yeah, but see, that's what I want to be careful about. So it, that stuff does happen in an anime game, and that kind of stuff shouldn't happen because right. it is broken. But it got to a point where we were all so good at the game that even though Yajirobe might have been that much weaker than some of the stronger characters, if we played well enough, we could still beat them. Right. And I I like that type of balance where it's like if you have a high enough skill level, 
if you know when to use certain moves, if you know when to save certain things, then you uh -huh. can beat a player, a character of a higher power level. But at the same time, if I'm that character of a higher power level, then I want to feel like I'm stronger than you because right. that's how the show feels. Yeah, and a lot of us do feel like that. But at the same time, there's still a big majority of people who are just like, I don't want to play this anymore. Actually, Xenoverse is a great example. So when Xenoverse was made, none of the developers ever thought, okay, how can people export the system? When they made Xenoverse, they made it so you can create your own custom character, character and build them the way you want. This is supposed to be you in the game. But what ended up happening is, is after level 85 got released, at level 99, level 90, all those upgrades, what happened was you had so many attribute points to the point where you could basically build a broken character, and that's what online only became, was just broken characters. And I gotta admit, that was not fun. I mean, it was fun because at the same time, you know, to play the devil's advocate, you could also use a broken character yourself. But some people don't want to do that. Some people want to just make that one character that suits who they want to be, essentially. But if you go online in Xenoverse, back in the day, you kind of have to prepare for all the people who are going to have the broken stats. So you want to put 100 into health, 100 into basic attacks, 100 into strikes, 100 into whatever, so you can combat those people and kind of play on their level, which can turn people off at the same time because it's like, again, when you make your custom character, you want to cater to yourself, not to what you have to do to survive. And that could be kind of off-putting. So I'm hoping in Xenoverse 2 they kind of fix that and don't put us in a situation where your characters can be easily breakable to the point where you just have to do that again. Or allow us just to do things like, you know, play as regular characters only, which is what I've been doing for the last few months in Xenoverse. I mean, balance is very important. And I think, honestly, Xenoverse had a good balance for the regular characters. Because, I mean, someone like uh, Mr. Satan, if you really, really are good, you could technically beat someone who has, like, you know, Goku or something, but it's really tough. And I feel like that has a better balance. Like, you know, look at someone like Apul and Raspberry who literally take out, are taking out two hits. But it's, it's, it's tricky. It's a gift and curse, like I said. That's what, yeah. And I think that was, that was I mean, that was the, the, the trickiest part about Xenoverse really was, was they introduced the aspect of, um, I mean, it was the first, like, major Dragon Ball Z game that you could play online for one thing and, like, have mass amounts of players online at the same time fighting each other. And then just introducing a created character where you could up the stats but like my type of unbalancing the unbalancing that that i'm a fan of like i said is is the is when it feels like the show and some characters are going to be weaker some characters are going to be stronger and that's why i'm still having so much fun with xenoverse uh when i play with like kagi or dino or player mm -hmm. two is we just do random battles and so yeah. we just get you get who you get and if that character is a little bit weaker then you just have to work that much harder mm -hmm. and that's what makes it really fun and i know that the created character like yes that is a problem with the development because it was developed that way so it was a system that can be taken advantage of but at the end of the day too i mean part of the player part of the blame is on the fan base part of the blame is on the players because they're the ones who are going to be exploiting those they're the ones that are always going to pick the stronger characters but you're going to kind of have that in every game i mean yeah. even in street fighter you know i i main ken and if i go up against a character who i struggle with then i'm always going to struggle against that character because they might have a few advantages over me but like it's it's really hard to balance things out and I would rather have them focus I don't want broken mechanics but I would rather have them focus on making it feel like the show when I'm playing the game rather than making every character have like completely balanced out stats yeah which again is a gift and a curse this is a gift because it's cool to see like in Burning Blood seeing how you know Sanji can't attack girls, but at the same time, it's a curse if you like Sanji, because you literally can't use him online. So, I don't know. This is one of those weird questions that's going to be hard to cater to every single fan, because everyone's going to have a different preference. And this is the big challenge when it comes out to making anime games. You cannot please every single person out there, especially yeah. ones who don't prefer the anime. That's yeah. why it's like, if you're in the One Piece community, you will love the One Piece game. If you're in the Dragon community like myself, you will love every Dragon Ball game. It's like, I even enjoyed Battle Z for what it was at the time. Other yeah, people and I think did. I think that's I'm, like, I'm kind of biased in that way because I've had people say to me before like, oh, if a terrible Dragon Ball Z game comes out, you shouldn't play it. You're not gonna play it. And I'm like, well, no, I am though. And they know that I am because yeah. I'm a hardcore fan. I'm going to play that game and I'm going to enjoy it on some level because that series means so much to me. I'm going to enjoy it. Like there's they. I mean they could they would have to mess it up pretty bad. I mean I've played some pretty bad like Dragon Ball Z Flash games online. And at some level, I'm still like, I'm still having fun with it because it's Dragon Ball Z. So it, it is a very fine line. It's very hard to answer. Obviously, some people are going to be on different sides of the fence with this because some mm -hmm. people like balanced games. Some people want the game to feel just like the anime. It's going to be really hard for those two to get along. I think there is a, a fine line that we can walk on and create a, a really good game for that. Not going to be easy. Uh, but I think we've both pretty much said 
all that we want to say about it? Have you, do you have any other points? No, that's pretty much everything. It's a gift that's and a curse. <laughs> gift and a curse. Yeah, it's a gift and a curse. Some people are going to love it. Some people aren't. Uh, but we want to know what you guys think. So definitely drop a comment down below in the comment section. Let us know what you think. If you would prefer anime games feel like the anime and leave fighting games to be balanced. Or if you prefer all video games all the time to be perfectly balanced in a perfect world where everyone uh, has a really fair chance of beating anyone else. Um, drop your comments down below. Let us know what you think. We will be in the comment section responding to you guys. Uh, obviously, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash the like button. If it's your first time stopping by either of the channels, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And we will talk to you all in the next video.